Well, the reason Kendall gets this award is because she was put in one of the most difficult positions I'd ever see, Kendall Campbell. And I have a speech here about Kendall that I'm not going to give. <laughs> right away, I'm just going to throw it out. Um, normally, we do not give awards to career employees who do Section 106 work because we feel they should just do really great work. And we do give career achievement awards, but uh, Dr. Kendall Campbell really didn't, it is still working. So it's not a career achievement, but we made an exception this year because Kendall Campbell had a particularly difficult job. Kendall works, worked for the Navy. And in deference to the Navy, they have a very specific mission. And we have Captain Arnie in the audience. Wait, Captain Arnie, there he is. They have a very specific mission, so does the Department of Defense, and it doesn't blend well with historic preservation. And I know we should all sit here and say maybe it should, but it doesn't. They have a very specific mission, and historic preservation has a different mission, and they don't necessarily blend. It's not like other countries. I like to give the example that in Israel, the, to be, um, uh, when you go into the military, you do a sunrise walk to the top of Masada. Uh, you, we've had wars fought over the Western Wall and the Dome of the Rock. I mean, actual wars fought over historic places. Uh, nobody in France ever looked at the Eiffel Tower and said, Boy, that's great riverfront property. Why is that thing there? Um, I always like to point out to, um, you know, in Rome, nobody ever looked at the Colosseum and said, well, that's kind of a crappy, rundown soccer stadium. Let's get rid of that. Uh, and most countries really indoctrinate their military, military with their historic places. This nation hasn't done the same thing. And, you know, I don't put the blame with the military, I actually put the blame with we the people. We have, of course, the issue with Congress to say, no, wait a minute, the military, is, it's, as, is, it's as important for them to protect our history as it is to protect us. Because our history is us. And we really haven't done a good job. So the reason Kendall gets this award is because she was put in one of the most difficult positions I'd ever seen. She had to deal with numerous projects where she was not only in tension with her own agency, but she was in tension with her own community. And I have to say the community said things to Kendall that were just completely unfair. Called on her as a mother, how could she work for these people as a mother, how could she do this? I mean, it was, it was not right. She was being a professional at the same time Kendall had to run up against her own agency and kept trying to explain why her work with history was so important and that the agency needed to comply with the National Historic Preservation Act. Now she also had to run up against the fact that the military has authorization to work with natural resources but was never given uh, independent authorization to work on cultural resources outside the National Historic Preservation Act. So it gives them a little bit of, of, a, of an out that we as preservationists may not like, but their lawyers certainly like. And Kendall had to thread the needle. And the reason we're giving her a Preservation Hero Award is because she threaded a very contentious and difficult needle every day with a smile, a good attitude. She never complained. She never insulted her own agency. God only knows how she got through that, but she did. She never, she never made an insult, and she was always, always um, incredibly professional. And I think in that case, we had someone in cultural resources who really went above and beyond on a personal and professional level, and probably one of the hardest circumstances I've ever seen. I am gonna read a bit. Um, of our speech. I'm going to say, in looking back at her work for which we honor her today, Kendall says she is humbled to have had the opportunity to establish and build from scratch the cultural resource program at the air station. She felt it was an honor for her to serve as an advocate for cultural resources dating back thousands of years, as well as those dating to the last 50. She proudly remembers the positive outcomes of a difficult consultation for construction with Navy support of a pipeline through culturally sensitive lands. 
Kenzel also mentioned her work on behalf of the Navy's privatized housing manager for demolition of several farmhouses that predated construction of Alt Field in the 1940s. The consultation brought her in close contact with farm owner descendants who were closely with Kendall to mitigate the loss of the houses. Kendall is deeply honored by the Preservation Hero recognition and thanks Joe Kunzler for submitting the nomination. Thank you, Joe. And let's give Joe a round of applause. Thank you. She cannot be here today because of previous commitments made in conjunction with her new job in Alaska and we were very sorry to lose her from Washington State. And I just want to say, too, that the, um, the tension that Kendall experienced, the difficulty in raising the issues of cultural resources in a military environment, as I said earlier, really is on us. We need to do a better job with Congress and others to say this is a balance. It is not just about one mission over and above another mission. It's about balancing missions together. And it's not about natural resources being more important than cultural resource. Again, it's all about balance in everything we do. So next time you meet your congressional delegation, keep that in the back of your mind. But now, before I bring up Captain Arnie, because I know Joe Kunzler has to leave, I know Joe had wanted to say a few words about Kendall, so I'm going to turn, <coughs> turn the microphone over to Joe for just a minute. Two minutes. Two and a half minutes, Joe. Two and a half. <laughs> First, I don't know how I can top that speech. I think Dr. Brooks nailed it. Uh, like she was flying for the Blue Angels. Uh, but uh, I uh, think it's safe to say, though I speak from only my heart, I wonder rhetorically how many public servants would invest great amounts of time and political capital to find a win-win instead of an us versus them solution in 2019. Precisely what Kendall Campbell did in regard to the Section 106 eco blocks. Um, Kendall got EBs and HR supporters, mostly opponents of the Navy outlying field flight ops where the jets come in very loudly, practice a carrier landing, take off, and practice again. Uh, they're, they're a few shed of a preserve protected by shrubs, and all of supporters like me, who, with this camera, take pictures of the flight ops, we wanted a historical report into, quote, the historical legacy of all of Coopville in the history of Whidbey Island, end quote, especially as a story of outlined for Coopville itself is hardly a bird in the archives history. Well, it was written by Dr. Douglas Brinkley in The Great Deluge, the great deluge about buried history, that history in the end is how much it's about caring enough to set the record straight even if reliving the past is painful or disappointing. Buried history leads to rank defilement of the human spirit. So Kendall Campbell did nothing else on any of would be island. My friend Kendall helped inspire me and at times actively helped me to unearth that very buried history. The Section 106 MOA report into the Navy's reserve use of Olaf Kupfel and its relationship to the broader historical legacy of the military and the EB's reserve will help unbury that history. Finally, I nominated Kendall to protect her reputation because of the exact tensions that Allison Brooks spoke of moments ago. For our final analysis, all of us who fought and continue to fight for outlying field Kupfel do so because we have each other. We have a deep sense of duty to the young men and women of this NES would be to protect us, to protect them in return, and in recognition around the OLF, there is ahead buried history to unbury and new history to create. Thank you so much, Dr. Brooks, for doing this. It was a pleasure working with you as well the past few years. Thank you so much. I'm going to call up Captain Arnie to say a few words about Kendall Campbell. I'm just sorry Kendall can't be here, but mom is, so remember her mom's here. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Brooks. Thanks, Joe, for those words. But uh, thanks for the opportunity to be able to come here and accept this on behalf of Kendall. Uh, Kendall was working at the installation from late 2012 until just recently when she went up to Alaska to work with the Army Corps of Engineers. Her work in the installation uh, was important. It uh, has, the installation has 78 um, archaeological sites. There's 2,000 structures, 28 of which are eligible to be listed on the National His uh, Historic uh, Registry. And uh, the installation itself also comprises not just of the sites on Whidbey Island at Alt Field, which is our main air station, but also Seaplane Base, which is a treasure of cultural resources in itself. Outlying Field Coopville, which Joe just mentioned, and then Lake Hancock, which is an old range down in the south part of the island. But also it goes out into Oregon as well. 
Kendall had to work with uh, our property in Coos Bay, which is also a, uh, nas a national registry uh, site, historic site, and it's in conjunction with tribal lands there, and also the Naval Weapons Training Facility at Boardman, Oregon. That place itself has 10 miles of the Oregon Trail. It's got a historic cemetery from the decades of hardships that we experienced in our expansion west. It's got a traditional cultural property and it's got a public interpretation area. All that due in large part to Kendall's work preserving that. Kendall um, has a great archaeological history in herself. Uh, she's a great archaeologist experienced in the Pacific Northwest, uh, Arizona, Florida, Texas, and all the way down to Peru. She was a professor of anthropology for many students at universities, and a great professor at that, from what I understand, uh, from multiple sources. And, and um, her experience and her academic knowledge uh, were, were really great. But the most important part, as Dr. Brooks alluded to, was her demeanor and her ability to listen to and work with many people representing all sides of the issues and all these challenging situations that she came upon while working at the air station as also mentioned, setting up the cultural resources program. Uh, all the things that she did in her time there are really too numerous to mention, but uh, I personally uh, was very grateful for my time working with her, that I was able to walk on the beaches of Pulnell Point and uh, down at Lake Hancock and look at middens and understand the Native American history, understand the prehistoric context where we live, understand the history of the settlers and understanding uh, military history and the contemporary life that we live in. And that is all the context and the environment that we live and operate in today. Because of her work, we have sailors, officers, aviators who are going to continue to be able to do the mission, train for the mission, to defend our nation, deployed overseas every day and night because of the resources that she's been able to pr preserve. But also, because of her work, all those people and the people who live and visit around our bases are going to be able to see and understand the historical context that we live and operate in. People driving on Scenic Highway in uh, uh, Oak Harbor will be able to look across the harbor and see that distinctive building where we used to do training from. You know it very well, Building 27. And it sits as this white building against this uh, grassland on a bluff with the Cascades in the background, bald eagles flying overhead. These are important things that we need to preserve while we continue to be able to do our mission. Uh, there are sites, numerous ones that I can mention on the installation and around that she has, she has done. And it's important for our people, our Americans, our visitors, and the people who work in the Navy every day to understand this context. So I'm very grateful to Dr. Brooks. Uh, thank you for the time uh, working with you as well, working through our challenging times. And uh, we continue, though we represent different sides of issues, we continue to look for a stronger society uh, through historical understanding and through national security and we'll always find common ground to be able to do that for the best of our nation. So thank you again and uh, I'm really grateful for this. So I'm going to present the award to you and to Kendall's mom, Please, Diane. Diane. from a long line of people who've served this way. Her great-grandfather opened this very legislature by singing several, several sessions. He also was a selectman in the city of Seattle for many years. I have trod these marbled halls for over 25 years in the past, mostly working on education issues 
And my proudest moment was being a, a co-founder of Cascadia College, which is the newest community college in the state of Washington. That took quite a few years and diplomacy, but diplomacy <laughs> does work. Um, the only, and you know, Kendall would love to be here today. She texted me that they were going to go to the North Slope, but the weather wasn't permitting, so she's home this week. She would love to be here, and it would be so comforting for her to hear the kind words said about her way of approaching her job and the things that she was able to accomplish with that. And I will just say, I'm just a challenge to the people in this room represent the very best of what we the people need to do to keep our government going well. This is not reality TV. This is not let's make a deal. This is about us all working at our A game. And I'm looking out at a room full of people who do operate the, at their A game level. And let's just keep it up and keep it going. Thank you so much. <laughs> Each other harsh emails and call each other up and laugh and go, oh. <laughs> it's like being lawyers. <laughs> um, okay, so now we're